corridor? What corridor? Ukraine's civilians are still being targeted as they desperately try to find a place of safety. Kyiv responds with fury to Moscow's insistence that only those who seek refuge in Russia itself or its ally, Belarus, will be protected from the shells and mortars. At seven, we have a special report from the city of Irpin as fleeing Ukrainians come under fire. My family go to east, I go to war. You're going to war? Yes, it's my land. One and a half million people have already escaped. Hundreds of thousands more face an increasingly desperate situation. Here, meanwhile, the Home Secretary denies accusations. Her refugee policy is too little, too late. Energy emergency fears over the worsening cost of living crisis as oil and gas prices hit record highs. The Queen's first in-person engagement since COVID and a discreet floral nod to the people of Ukraine. And... A little ray of light amidst the darkness. How music is sustaining shattered spirits, even in the depths of war. This is the ITV Evening News with Mary Nightingale. Good evening. Russia has been accused of continuing to heavily shell six Ukrainian cities, preventing the evacuation of civilians trapped inside. It came just hours after the invading forces offered to create humanitarian corridors, but only if they went to Belarus or even Russia itself. Well, that was condemned as cynical and immoral by Ukraine, which rejected the offer. Hundreds of thousands of civilians remain besieged in the southern city of Mariupol, where there's no power and little access to clean water or medicine. A further round of peace talks did start this afternoon, but so far they haven't stopped the invasion, nor indeed the attacks on civilians. From Kyiv, here's our Europe editor, James Mates. Well, we have plenty more still to come on the ITV Evening News, including what the Queen said to Canada's Prime Minister as she fully returned to work after Covid. Is Britain doing enough to sanction Russia? Why Labour claims it's not. And coming up at seven, an eyewitness account from the front line as desperate civilians try to flee Ukraine's capital. Look around us. This is evidence of trauma, of human agony, and it's everywhere. It is a really powerful report from Rohit Kachru from the outskirts of Kyiv. And that is all coming up after the break. Do join me. Welcome back. Now, the government has pledged to fast track new laws, which it says will hurt President Putin and what it called his vicious regime. The economic crime bill is aimed at stopping wealthy Russians laundering money through the city of London. But opposition parties and even some Conservative MPs say it doesn't go far enough, nor indeed fast enough, as our political correspondent Daniel Hewitt reports. Well, MPs are debating those sanctions right now in the House of Commons and our political editor Robert Peston is there. But Robert, before we get to what's being discussed and, and what the Prime Minister said, there's a, a bit of breaking news, isn't there, in just the last couple of minutes. You are watching the ITV Evening News. Here's what's still ahead before Emmerdale. The desperate rush for safety on the outskirts of Kiev. A special report on the civilians under fire on the front line. Evidence from the inquest of Corrie McKay, the airman who vanished after a night out in Suffolk. In Australia, after record rain and devastating floods, the nation is braced for another deluge with more wet weather forecast. And so ahead, Dizzy Rascal's angry response after being found guilty of assaulting his former partner and... Moving music, giving hope to those trapped on the front line of war.
ITV News has witnessed desperate scenes as people try to escape the deadly fighting near Kyiv, knowing all the time that they too could be targeted. Ipin is a city on the outskirts of Ukraine's capital. Its main bridge over a river of the same name has been destroyed, and that makes escape all the more difficult. Our global security editor, Road Katru, filmed with families and young and old alike as they fled for their lives. They are running out of time to leave before they become trapped by advancing Russian forces. And there have been emotional goodbyes with the loved ones who are deciding to stay and fight. Well, Emmerdale is coming up in 15 minutes' time, but still to come before that. <laughs> Music that's lifting spirits in the war zone and beyond. And we're nearly a week into March, so is there some spring-like weather on the way? Right, we'll be back with Alex and the forecast in just a few minutes. Join us then. And welcome back now to what's going to be our regular look at what's happening with the weather here and sometimes even across the world with Alex. And there has been really exceptional rainfall in parts of Australia where they have witnessed record river levels. It's desperate stuff and it's not over yet, is it? It's not, I'm afraid. Uh, we're looking at the worsted areas across the states of Queensland and New South Wales. And in the weather world, we talk about these events as being a one in a hundred year event, but some experts and politicians in Australia are talking about it as a one in a thousand year event. That is how bad the flooding has been. And I think it is worth taking a look back at just how bad it was across that southeastern part of Australia. Rivers bursting their banks, turning streets into waterways. In fact, some areas have seen more than a meter's worth of rain falling in around four to five days. They've seen that being topped up over the last few days. In fact, uh, through the next 24 to 36 hours, it is possible that we could see another 200 million meters of rainfall. Well, let's take a look at the forecast map for Australia and you will notice uh, well, much of the country seeing dry conditions, particularly inland. But you can see that eastern coast being affected by heavy, thundery downpours. As I say, another 200 millimetres is possible as we head through the next couple of days. But there is some good news in the fact that when we get to Wednesday and Thursday, we're going to see that rain pulling away. So conditions are certainly improving there. But I think it's worth bearing in mind, actually, that, you know, Know, across our summer months, we would get around 250 millimetres of rain across the UK. They've seen some of that in a day. Wow, amazing. Uh, closer to home, what can we expect? Well, closer to home, things are a fair bit quieter, I have to say. It is going to turn milder as we head towards the end of this week. Still the chance of a bit of snow up over the high ground, but that shouldn't cause too many problems. Let's take a look. You may want to soak up this lovely winter sun whilst it lasts. Heinz Big Soup sponsors ITV National Weather. Well, I hinted at milder conditions as we head through the next few days. Certainly, it is going to be a fair bit windy out towards western parts. So this is where it is going to be uh, pretty wet as well at times. In fact, if we take a look at the, at the pressure pattern setup, you'll notice where those areas are coming in. Affecting many western parts, so rain out towards the west as you push through the overnight period into tomorrow. But Eastern areas are going to get away with drier and brighter conditions, much like we saw today. As for this evening and overnight, as you can see, it's all fairly quiet. Certainly cloudier skies across the south, but you'll notice these are going to be disappearing northwards as we head through the overnight period. And that will drag our nighttime temperatures down pretty chilly. Rurally, certainly below freezing in towns and cities, as you can see with the temperatures here, down to around one to three degrees Celsius. So most parts will escape a frost, particularly out towards the west, and that will be because of the breeze picking up overnight into tomorrow. So tomorrow itself starts off fairly quiet, another bright start for most of us, as you can see, another great deal of data on the chart there. But you can see as we run the sequence, you head through the daytime, clouds start to push in out towards the west and southwest. And then we're going to see this band of rain affecting many western parts as we push into the later parts of the day. But for central and eastern areas, another fairly dry day, some decent sunshine. Temperatures are around average for the time of year with a high of around 11 or 12 in the south. That is your forecast.
Heinz Big Soup. Sponsors ITV National Weather. So you are going to be in the studio with us every evening from now on. In the studio and also out on location sometimes as well, but hopefully not when it's too cold. Well, it's very nice <laughs> to have you on board. Welcome to ITV News, Alex. Well, before we go, let's hear from Julie about what's ahead on News at 10. Julie. Mary, thanks. We'll have all the latest from Ukraine, of course. And as criticism of the UK government's visa rules for Ukrainian refugees grows ever louder, we'll be reporting from Calais. We'll be hearing from one woman who travelled all the way across Europe to get her relatives out. They are stuck in Calais, so far unable to come. We'll have all that and more at 10. OK, Julie, thank you. Coming up next is Emmerdale, but from me and all the team here, and in Ukraine, of course. Bye-bye.